Hello, hello, it's Thumplet here. Welcome to part 17 of 25 of the College Entrance Test Review. Credits to the Review Masters for providing me with these items. To continue, item 65. When the length of a rectangle is divided by 4 and the width is tripled, the area of the new rectangle is the area of the original one multiplied by, and we have four choices here. So we have variable given because the length and the width are not given. So we'll use the trick, we can substitute values for L and W, or the length and the width, since the answer is going to be numerical anyway. So let's just have a nice value for the length, let's say 4, and then let's just make the width 2. It doesn't really matter because I mean, you can use other values if you want. Anyway, so we're going to use the formula area equals length times width since we have a rectangle. 4 times 2, that gives us 8. So this is the area of the original rectangle, so let's just, put it, uh, let's just remember that for now. Now, the length is divided by 4, so from 4 it becomes 1. Now the width is tripled, so we multiply it by 3. 2 times 3, it gives us 6. So the area of the new rectangle, it's still a, it's still a rectangle, so we have 1 times 6. This gives us uh, the new area of 6. Now, the area of the new rectangle is the area of the original one multiplied by blank. So the area of the original one, which is 8, multiplied by blank, so I'm literally going to put blank here, equals the area of the new rectangle. So the area of the new rectangle is the area of the original one multiplied by blank. So 8 times blank should give us 6. So all we have to do is solve for the blank. Now let's just say the blank is x, uh, n for now. So n will be equal to 6 over 8. So we just simplify that, we're going to get the answer of 3 fourths. So this will be the answer. We have choice D. Question 66. In parallelogram W, X, Y, Z, V is the midpoint of Z, Y. So V is the midpoint of Z, Y. The area of triangle W, Z, V is what percent of the area of, tri sorry, the area of W, X, Y, Z? Now, take note, we we're given with a parallelogram, but no other conditions other than the fact that V is the midpoint of Z, Y. Now, a smiley face here to tell you that just like how if we have a variable given we can try to let va let specific values to be uh, that variable now if we have a variable given such as a parallelogram why not simplify the question by assuming it is a square now I'm not violating anything because a square is indeed a parallelogram and I still have my condition here that V is the midpoint of ZY and I'm not violating the given, so we can use this fact and then simplify uh, the question. So uh, with this figure, it might be a little bit easier now because we're, get, we're trying to get how much, sorry, the area of triangle WZV uh, is what percent of the area of WXYZ. Now it might be obvious after I draw a dashed line through the middle, like this. So the area of triangle WZV is exactly one-fourth of the entire technically square over here. So it's technically one-fourth of the parallelogram. So one-fourth will be the answer, but uh, we have four choices in percent. So we're going to convert it to percent. Uh, we use the convention that we multiply by 100. So 4 and the 100 will cancel. 4 becomes a 1. 100 becomes a 25. So this becomes 25%. And this gives us choice B as our answer. Next, we have question 67. The figure has four squares placed side by side. How many rectangles are in the figure? Now, we can try to uh, list all of them down. So we know that there are one, two, three, four. We have five, six, and seven. Uh, we have eight, oops, sorry. We have the eight one here the ninth one here, and then lastly for the tenth one, we have this entire thing. So we should be able to get uh, 10 is the answer. But then again, it's, uh, we're technically doing uh, trial and error, or we're just listing, so we might miss some cases. And who knows, the answer might be 12. So that's just from counting, we get 10, and nothing is wrong so far. So I guess we can cross uh, A and B out for now. So we just have to decide, is it 10 or 12? Now, to verify that the answer is indeed 10, so spoiler alert, the answer is indeed 10, we're going to use the fact that we're going to choose, okay? So 
to have a rectangle in the figure, we have to choose two horizontal lines and two vertical lines. Why? Because if I have two horizontal lines and two vertical lines, so well, let's just say, um, for example, we're going to choose, uh, since we only have, only have two horizontal lines, we can only choose that. And then let's say we have this. So if I have these four, if I choose these four, that will correspond to this rectangle over here. So I choose the two vertical lines here and the two horizontal lines here. So it will correspond to this rectangle. Now, uh, as another example, if I chose this and that, I would have this, 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 and this. So this will correspond to uh, this rectangle here. So we want to take uh, all possible cases. So we have to choose two horizontal lines and two vertical lines. So for the horizontal lines, we have two possible choices. As you can see here, we only have one and then two. So we have two here. So we just, we're just going to do two, choose two. And then we have five vertical lines and we're going to choose two vertical lines. So we have five, choose two. Now recall uh, the formula for uh, n choose r. So n choose r, that's given to be n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. So do remember that. Now 2 choose 2, that's going to be just 2 factorial over 2 factorial times 2 minus 2, which is 0. So I'm just going to write 0 factorial. Now this is just equal to 1, as you can see, 2 factorial and the 2 factorial cancel, and 0 factorial is just 1 anyway. So 2 choose 2 is actually 1. Now for 5 choose 2, uh, we have 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 5 minus 2, that's 3 factorial. So we can uh, simplify this as 5 times 4 times 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 3 factorial. Now the 3 factorial will cancel, so it's going to be just 5 times 4, which is 20, divided by 2 factorial, which is 2. So 20 divided by 2, that gives us 10. So 5 choose 2, uh, this will give us 10. So we just have 1 times 10, and 1 times 10 in, is indeed 10. So for these types of questions, we're going to use the choose, and we're going to choose the number of possible horizontal lines, and then multiply it by uh, choosing the number of uh, vertical lines. So Although it's a 4 by 1 grid of squares here, we're technically choosing from 2 horizontal lines and 5 vertical lines. Uh, so do uh, remember this way to solve or to find the number of rectangles in the given figure. For item 68, an isosceles triangle, oh by the way, this answer, uh, we have choice C for item 67. Now for item 68, an isosceles triangle with base 10 centimeters has an area of 60 square centimeters. Find its perimeter. Now we have a base of 10 here and then we have an area given, so we can easily solve for the height. Since 1 half times the base, which is 10, times the height here, it's going to give us um, the area. So 60 should equal 1 half times the base, now times the height. So uh, 2 and the 10 here can cancel, so it's just going to be a 5. So h here, I can write it as 60 divided by 5. So just get this and we're going to get that h is 12. So we have h equals 12 so far. And note that the base of 10 in an isosceles triangle combined with the fact that h here uh, equals 12. Now note that in an isosceles triangle, the base, sorry, the altitude to the base, so this red segment here, is going to be perpendicular and since it's isosceles, this red line or segment acts as a at, acts as the axis of symmetry. So the left side and the right side are, is symmetrical. So the 10 segment here, sorry, the base of 10 here, it can be split into 5, 5. So after we can split it into 5, 5, we're just going to focus on uh, one right triangle here. So we're going to focus on, let's say, this right triangle. So this part now has a length of 5, and we know that the height over here uh, is given to be 12, and by the Pythagorean theorem, we can easily solve for uh, the length of this side over here. I'm going to highlight it in green, this side. So let's say this green side equals uh, k for now. So by the Pythagorean theorem, 5 squared plus 12 squared, that should equal k squared. Now you can notice that 5, 12, 13 is a 
uh, it's a famous Pythagorean triple. But anyways, we can try to solve this anyway. So 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is 144. And that's equal to k squared. Now 25 plus 144, that gives 169. 169 equals k squared. So k squared would give, uh, sorry, k would give positive or negative 13. But since we're just dealing with uh, sides, so we're just, we're just going to take the positive root. So we're just, we're just going to have k equals 13. Now after we get that k equals 13, we're going to go back to our figure. Now since it's an isosceles triangle, if this part is k, the other side here should also be k. So this part should also be k. So let me write this down as, uh, this part would be 13. Oops. This part would be 13. This part would also be 13. And it is given that the base here, uh, that's equal to 10. So all I have to do is just, to th just add the three sides off the triangle. So I'm just going to start 10 plus 13 plus 13. So 13 plus 13, that gives 26. Add 10 to 36. Sorry, add 10 to 26. We're going to end up with 36. And don't forget the unit of CM. So we have choice B as the answer to item 68. Hopefully you guys learned something new from this video, and I'll see you in part 18. Bye-bye.